This is part three of the video series I'm making now how to how I sharpen chainsaw chains. I made a little demonstration of a, a chainsaw cutter here. And to explain to you what's going on when this when the chain is going down the bar cutting the wood. Now bottom top whatever if you're using the bottom it's still gonna we're gonna put it on the top so you get get the idea. When this cutter is going down down the bar it comes in contact with wood what it's going to do is it's going to rock backwards a little bit until this stops it. Okay, and then the power of the, of the chainsaw pulling the chain is going to rip it on through and it's going, to, it's going to pull it right back out of the wood. It's going to continue to do that, swimming like a dolphin all the way down the bar. It just, it just it go, does this all the way down the bar. And that's all great when the chainsaw chain is new and you use regular, uh, these fixed uh, static depth gauge settings. When you use one of them, your cutter's new. When the thing rocks back, Watch this, it raises up right here. The, the tip of the bar, the, the cutter raises up. Okay, well, the, the, the more that you've sharpened your chainsaw chain back, say you get way back to here. Now when this thing raises up, you know, when it kicks back, it doesn't raise up hardly nothing. Okay, so, so the problem being is, if you don't compensate for the fact that it's not no longer raising up, the wood's gonna, as you file this thing back, your cutter back, farther and farther and farther. And you set the depth gauges according with their little gauges. It's going to continue to cut less and less and less wood until you get to a point where it won't hardly cut nothing. Okay, if you use a progressive depth gauge, and I'll show you that later in this video, what it will do, it will rem the distance below this is below the, your cutter. The more you you take this back, the more you have to increase this distance for the cutter to cut like. The chain was like brand new. I've got some other videos out there I'll show you. I think part two was showing that. That one chain, that one chain I got there, the first, the first test one, there's like nothing left in the cutter. The chainsaw's still cutting like a brand new saw. Because I use a progressive depth gauge. You you don't need you don't need to you know everybody's using this this this, this chisel chain. You don't need these great big hooks in, in this cutter. If you think about it, from the tip of this to right here, that's all the deeper it's going in the wood. What is all this groove down here doing anybody any good? It's not doing nothing. That little bit right at the top, you're talking, you know, possibly up to 40 thousandths when you get way down here toward the end. That's the only cutting any wood. This angle right here is so important to get it right. And the angle this away when you grind the saw chain. When you're using a file and you're trying to file it, you're trying to file with the file chainsaw chain and you, and you you know people can do it yeah but they usually screw them up why do they screw them up because when you put a file in here we're going to use this little round thing right here as a demonstration of a file the height the side of this file right here is is determining the angle of the tip of that cutter that's doing all the work if you don't hold that file the exact right height the exact right height okay you're not going to get the right angle on the, on the edge of this cutter right here what's doing all the work. I mean, I don't care what it's doing out here. I'm talking about right here. By, by, by opening a bigger bigger notch in this thing, what you are doing is if you bring that tip of that bar in contact with any wood whatsoever, you're going to make it so easy for it to dig in that it's going to bite down and throw the saw back up in your face. People, this is, this is dangerous. There's no need in this. You know, get these angles right. Get a file gauge. If you're going to use a chainsaw file, get a file gauge and hold that saw about that file about 20 but 20 percent of that file needs to be above the top of that cutter. If it's not, you're going to go. The, the cutter, the metal's thick right here. Okay, it's thin all through here. It's just natural. The file's going to want to eat more of this away than all this big long thick piece of metal right here. So your file, that's the hard thing about sharpening with a file. You got the thin piece of metal and you got a thick piece of metal. Which, which, which way do you think the file's going to go? Unless you have something to hold the file up there. The deal with the grinder though, when the grinder comes down, why I like grinders so much, when it comes down to grind down inside there, that angle is set. Ain't no ends up nars butts about it. That angle is set exactly where I put my grinder. The angle of my grinder is coming down. It's going to leave that edge exactly where it needs to be. And that's the great thing about using a grinder versus a file. It's just way, you know, to me, it's way easier, way better, way faster. And, it, and 
the other part of the video I'll show you about this depth gauge thing, which one I use to progressively set these depth gauges. And that second part that showed you that, that one chain, where one, one of the cutters are like half as long as the ones on the right, the rights are half as long as the ones on the left, plus it had the two cutters missing. Well, this, this, this depth gauge, it's not this is what's determining how much is cutting wood, it's this. People's not paying enough attention to, the, to these parts right here. The little depth gauge is very important to get this thing right so this cuts right. And it's hard, it's hard to do with the file. That's why I gave up on it. You file a chain, and one way I put the chainsaw on a vise, one way it just feels natural. You go around, you flip the chainsaw around, try to file it, it's, just, it's, un, it's un, un, uncoordinated. It doesn't feel right. I guess some people can do it, but I don't. I don't doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel natural. You want it taken more off one side to the other side. I like my grinder. You ain't never going to talk me out of it as long as I got a grinder. I'll never, I'll never use nothing. Never put a file or chain again. I do file these because there's no way I can grind these and grind them right. I got to file these and I don't mind doing it. Don't take me that long to do. That, later in this video, I'll show you that. As for doing the drags on my saw, Husqvarna makes this tool, and it's uh, made to f it's a for progressively filing the depth gauges. There's the tool. It's a depth gauge just sold by Husqvarna. Here's the number on the back of the thing. It tells you what part number it is. Here's the part the actual part number on it. I believe on this side right here, the 505-69-81-00. This is for a 325 pitch chain. As you can see in the top up here, and you can get them for 3H. They, I'm not sure if they make one for 3H low profile or not, but this thing is the best tool that you can possibly get to do the depth gauges, drags, whatever you want to call them on a saw. It, it lowers the depth gauge. It's not. It's not a set amount. It's got a. It's got a hard. On here it says hard, and up here and it says soft. You got two different. You got two different sides you can use. I always use the one for soft. It's a little bit more aggressive, but I like the way the saw cuts better. This here will. If you've got one cutter on, on one side, which is almost nothing, and you got a full cutter on the other side, your saw will still cut straight if you use this depth gauge. This sets the cutters exactly right. It's so simple to use. You just lay it on the. You can't have a saw. Let me tell you this first. You can't have a saw with all this extra safety stuff on here, which is not good, but. You know, if you're if you know what you're doing with the saw, most times you you, you don't need the stuff. You just got to be careful with the tip of that bar is at. You want to know the tip of that bar is at at all times. But anyhow, this just lays on here, and your and your depth gauge sticks through this. But every third time I grind my chain, I take the depth gauges off, and this this one doesn't even need to be done. It's all you just lay it on there. You don't got to hold it anymore. Your saw chain's got a little wiggle to it, so you can't have your file exactly flat. You got to account for the tiny bit of wiggle. So when you put this on here, it lays on there. You lay this on top. Okay, this near don't. I've already done this one here. Apparently, this just barely needs to be touched, if any at all. Yeah, it's it's, it's already been done. About every third time I grind it, I put throw this in here on there. And this this is the best tool there is to do depth gauges. And it just it just works fantastic. You have to turn the saw around. I put the saw on the vise. It works a lot better. Holds it good. It just lays right on there. The depth gauge sticks through there. And, and take, I got a steel file here, and uh, the steel file works great for this. And it just you know you don't get a, once you get this in place, you don't even got to hold the, the thing. Your file is holding it down, and it rubs from the tip of your from the tip of here down to the chain. The cutter on a chainsaw when it's cutting wood, it uh. A lot of people don't realize this. This cutter, whenever this cutter's cutting wood, the top edge of the cutter will, will, will catch a piece of wood. Right there. It'll catch the piece of wood. It will kick backwards, lean backwards. It actually, the front pulls up from the bar. Okay? And when it does this, okay, if, if the cutter's new and the, and the cutting edge is way out in front of this back heel of this, of this link, this cutter will actually raise up. But the more you file this back, the less lift you get in this cutter. And because of the less lift you get in the cutter, you have to have a lower depth gauge setting for a chain that's ground back farther than you do when a chain is new, because you lose that because you lose that lift. So that if it starts out at thirty thousandths less 
the, the depth gauge is 30 thousandths lower on a new chain. By the time you get down to the end and have a chain that cuts the same way as a new chain, this chain will still cut even if there's a tip of cutter left on here at all. It will cut just as good as a new chain if the depth gauge is set properly. And to get the depth gauge set properly, you have to use a progressive gauge to set your depth gauges. This thing is exactly, it sets them right on, it sets them progressively, it doesn't have one fixed amount, it's the best tool on the market out there today, as long as you don't have all this extra safety stuff on your chain that you can still use this. And that's why I buy these type of chains, because this works so damn good. Anyway, that's how I do it. Uh, I might even take you outside to show you how good this thing cuts. Uh, also, the uh, Take a look at them cutters, real close. Okay, do you see a lot of do you see a lot of hook in these cutters? You don't need a lot of hook in your cutters. And I'll prove my point here, and I'll come back and get my wood chisel. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You do not need a lot of hook in a cutter. You need some, but you don't need very much. And the more you put in there, the more dangerous that chain becomes, because whenever it touches something, it's liable to dig in and then where you get the kickback from. You get to tip that bar close to something, you got a lot of hook in them teeth, you're just asking for problems. cutter on a chainsaw chain you got the side and you got the top and I originally thought the top was the most important part yes it's important but not as important as the side and most people if you don't use a file gauge to keep your files at the right height when you're filing that when you're filing that tooth you're going to undercut that cutter you can't help but do it because the side is so thin versus the top the file is going to go down to the side unless you hold upward or use a file gauge on the thing it's also almost impossible to file to, to file a chain right. You've got to have some kind of thing to hold the file up in the air, otherwise you'll change the angle and you'll undercut the cutter because it's so much easier to cut the side. The other thing I found when I was grinding sharpening chains with a file a long time ago was it's always easier to do one side more than the other side. It's just natural one way and the other way is unnatural. So you wind up cutting more off one side than the other side. You wind up with a chain going crooked doing all kinds of weird stuff. But this thing I want to show you about this wood chisel right here. The top of your cutter on your on your on your chainsaw chain. Now it's sliding across the top of the wood and it's cutting this stuff here off. Like, like like this right here. Like you see me just shaving it off, okay? The sides already went through there. Now you take this thing right here and try to shave it off the side. That's hard to do. The side of the cutter is cutting this stuff. The top of the cutter is cutting this stuff right here that chips off real easy. The side of the cutter is cutting this end grain. And this little top thing that's just come by here just peeling it off. So the side of the cutter is doing most of the hard work because it's cutting that end grain. And when you undercut the cutter like that, when you make a big hook in that thing like that, sure it'll pull it in, but you're 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 just holding you're messing up the whole geometry of the saw, you're making it a very dangerous chain to use. This right here does not have this doesn't have it that much, you know, hook to it at all. You don't you want some, but you don't want that much. Because the salt, the chain just becomes too dangerous. If you touch that bar on anything when you're cutting that wood with a very hooked tooth, it great, greatly increases the chance that salt is going to get thrown back up in your face. So when you're cutting a, a bigger log, another tip: when you're you got a saw and you're cutting through a big log, like you know, a bigger bigger log than your bar can reach, come over here like this and cut this away. Cut this down here like this, then come back up and then slice down right here and remove this wood because if you come in this way right here with your bar you're leaving all this wood right here a little bit you can throw that thing right it's got something to grab a hold of you can throw that bar right up back in your face remove that wood on this way and then bring your saw up and around and finish your cut you want it with straighter cuts it'll be a lot safer it's no guarantee but it's better than trying to go through it like this and then coming back and cutting it again that's a dangerous way to cut a log if your bar if you got a saw your bar is not as long as you they won't extend the way through your log. Anyway, back to firewood. <laughs>